अच्छा सो वी वी डिड दिस काइंड ऑफ काइंड ऑफ अ चेन रिएक्शन थिंग जस्ट अ सेकंड एंड वी लर्न दैट समटाइम्स अ रिएक्शन वुड जस्ट कीप ऑन गोइंग ऑन एंड एंड देयर वर थ्री इक्वेशंस दैट वी हैड कम अप विद एंड so i'll just i'll just do one more because that one is important and uh, we'll just cover that quickly and then we'll move on theek okay? hai we'll just deal with it when we were when we when we'll be doing past papers so i'll just i'll just do one more which is uh, which one and this one is uh, specifically kmno4 uh, reacting with uh, so it's kmno4 reacting with uh feso4 acidified so this reaction uh the reason this reaction comes very often it's a very typical reaction of kmno4 it's your it's your normal uh, redox titration that you've done very frequently so so it's uh, it's acidified kmno4 uh reacting with with feso4 so we want to figure out uh, what's going to happen according to according to uh to our electrode uh, potentials so the first thing is you single out the reactant so you got a k plus 1 ion you got mno4 minus 1 and you have uh, h plus 1 and you have fe2 plus and you have so4 2 minus so we want to figure out who out of these gains electrons and loses electrons so so very quickly i'm just going to start copying the equations uh involving any involving these equations just a second let me drop this off <coughs> so involving any of these reactions so uh starting with uh let me get rid of this starting with with the, what's what's the first one uh i just take fe2 plus first uh so for fe2 plus i've got two equations i'm going to copy both of them you can not this and there's another one fe2 plus and not this one see this one turning into fe3 plus we'll copy that and then i've got uh, who else i've got k plus one so i'm going to copy the k plus one equation so that's with us and i've got all these mno4 minus one equations i've got two of them so the two equations where mno4 minus 1 there are actually three of them so there are three equations where mno4 minus 1 is involved so i'm going to i'm going to copy all three of them and who else do i have i've got uh, i've got h plus 1 i've got so4 minus 2 uh, so i'll just uh, where so4 minus 2 it's uh, it's this one so the two equations involving so4 minus 2 as well so let's copy these as well as so now i have all these uh, all these reactions involving my reactants and we'll going to figure out who gains electrons who's who loses electrons by figuring out uh, who's the highest potential who's the lowest potential so if you if you look over here and you have to make sure that it's one of your reactants uh, that end up gaining electrons or losing electrons so so starting with the first one uh, the highest one is coming out to be uh, this one so that means uh, this is the one that's uh, uh, the s2o8 equation this is the one that's going to gain electrons uh, but you're not going to use that equation because uh, you don't have if you look at your reactants you don't have s2o8 uh that's not there so i'm going to cut this equation out i'm going to remove this this doesn't apply to our reaction so getting rid of this uh the highest potential now is the 1.67 volt this is the highest now 
And I am going to use this because I do have MnO4 minus one and I do have H plus one. So they're the ones that are going to gain electrons. So there's, uh, there's absolutely nothing wrong with this equation. So this equation is fine. So we figured out who gains electrons. It's, uh, it's MnO4 minus one, uh, the reactants that are given at the top. So I'm going to circle that. It's, it's MnO4 minus one and H plus one together. They are the ones that are gaining electrons. And I need to figure out who loses electrons. So, so the, who loses electrons, it's the one that has the lowest potential, which in this case is, uh, I mean, this is the first one, minus two point. This one is minus 2.92. And this one is our lowest potential, but uh, I'm not going to be using that. A second. So I'm not going to be using that because I don't have K in my reactants. So K is missing from my reactants. So we're going to cut this equation out. Then I'm going to figure out which one is the lowest potential after that. That comes out to be minus 0.44. And we're not going to use this as well because we don't have Fe in our reactants. Uh, so although it likes to lose electrons, but we don't have Fe, so I'm going to cut that out as well. Removing that, the lowest potential now is uh, 0 0.17. But again, we're going to we're going to get rid of this equation because we don't have SO2. SO2, SO2 losing electrons does not apply to our uh, to our in our case. And once you get rid of that. Uh, this one is the lowest potential, but uh, that would also have to go because uh, you don't have a MnO4 minus two. I mean, this thing is not with you, so you're going to remove that as well. And now the lowest one comes out to be this one, 0 0.77. And we do have Fe2 plus. Fe2 plus is one of our reactants, which is given over here. So we do have that. So, so that means that is our lowest potential. So we have finally figured out who gains electrons, who loses electrons. I'm going to mark that in. Uh, so this is the lowest potential. This is the one that loses electrons. And this one over here is the highest potential. This is the one that gains electrons. And we're going to make an equation out of this. And you have to make the number of electrons gained and lost equal first. So for that, uh, this is three electrons. So the first one got to be, it's got to be three electrons as well. So we need to multiply that by three so that the equation gets balanced. And then I'm going to add the two together. I'm going to add up the reactants and the products, and I'm going to write the overall equation, which is over here. So if I add up the reactants in the first one, the reactant is three Fe2 plus. So that's my reactant over here, 3 Fe2 plus. And over here, the reactant is MnO4 minus one plus four H plus one. So it's it's MnO4 minus one plus four H plus one. And the product is going to be in the first one, the product is 3 Fe3 uh, plus. And in the next one, the product is MnO2 plus 2H2O. Now that's, now that's step one of the reaction. So that's the first equation that you're getting. And then you're going to move to the second part of the, of the reaction. Like once this happens and you're titrating, so that means, uh, I mean, the reaction is still continuing. Uh, once this happens, we are now going to try and figure out whether there's going to be a secondary reaction now. And that is that uh, will MnO2 that is formed, will it oxidize Fe2 plus again? And we're assuming Fe2 plus is in excess. I mean, this is something that we're assuming. There's a lot of Fe2 plus. So what we're trying to figure out now is that in, after the first reaction, MnO2 has been produced. You've 
and it is acidified. You, I mean, you have added acid to the to the mixture. And would it react with Fe two plus again? Uh, would there be further oxidation? I mean, we know that there wouldn't be any further oxidation of Fe three plus because iron, the maximum oxidation state that's given in the data booklet is Fe three plus. So, uh, but will MnO two uh, further react with Fe two plus? That's the question. MnO two is getting produced, and uh, your mixture now contains MnO two, and we're trying to figure out whether it's going to again react with Fe two plus or not. Uh, remember when we were talking about chain reactions, I told you specifically that you have to watch out for for these uh, uh, elements like Mn because it's got too many oxidation states. So it can continue to react further on once the once the initial reaction happens. So so this is what we we're trying to figure out. Would there be further reaction when Mn2 appears? So I'm going to add the MnO2 equation. And since I've I've gone through the process of eliminating the all the other equations previously as well, so I'm not I'm not really going to focus on those equations. We can add all those equations, but but it's kind of uh, it will be a waste of time because we would have to cancel all of them again. I mean, you can do the whole process, but I'll just stick to the Fe2 plus. Fe3 plus equation. And we were trying to figure out, will there, will there be a further oxidation reaction? And if you look over here, MnO2 is again appearing to be the higher potential. So it's going to gain electrons. So this is the one that has the high E0, it's going to get reduced. And we do have MnO2 in our reaction mixture. And it's going to go and react with Fe2+. Plus. And it's going to oxidize it. It's going to, it's the lower E naught, it's going to, it's going to lose electrons. So there's a further reaction that will happen. And you need to balance the number of electrons. So it's this should be multiplied by two. So is this is this part clear? So why is this clear? Ibra, Alicia, is this clear? Clear, yes. sir. Acha, so so the MnO2 that was produced is going to react again because it's the higher potential. So it's going to get reduced again. It's going to get further reduced to Mn2 plus. And the Fe2 plus is more of the Fe2 plus is going to get oxidized to Fe3 plus. So if you if you add up the reactants, uh, it's going to be two Fe2 plus. That's one of my reactant. That's the one that's over here. And in the top equation, the reactant is uh, MnO2 two plus four H plus one and uh, plus four H plus one. And the product is uh, in the first one, in the, in the bottom one, the product is, product is two Fe three plus. And in the top one, the product is uh, Mn two plus plus two H two O. So we've we've gotten this second reaction. So that's reaction number number two that we are getting. So the overall reaction now is that uh, if you add up the two reactants together, the overall reaction that you're going to get is uh, if you add reaction number one and two. So that's going to be, if you start adding up, it's going to be five Fe2 plus, like if you add up the reactants, it's going to be, it's going to be five Fe2 plus, and it's going to be MnO4 minus one, plus MnO2 plus four H plus one plus four H plus one. So it's, uh, it's MnO4 minus one, plus it's MnO2 at the bottom, plus in total you've got eight H, plus one. I said, so for this one, how did we figure out? I mean, the way you're going to figure out is you're going to do this again. Like, let's figure out 
will M N two plus get reduced further? Okay, so what you'll do is, I mean, I'm not going to do the working here just to be quick. What you're going to do is go and look at the M N two plus equation. Like I'll, I mean, this is what you're going to do. You're going to just mark it on the on the data booklet. So here's your M N two plus. You're trying to figure out whether it's going to get further reduced again. So you got M N two plus. It's minus point one eight volts. So compared to the Fe two plus equation, which was point seven seven, this is the lower potential. So that means, I mean, the Fe two plus equation was the was that one where uh, Fe two plus was with Fe two plus. I said right over here. This is the equation. So zero point seven seven. So you can just repeat the whole process, but if you repeat the whole process, you'll realize that uh, that M N two plus is not going to get reduced. I mean, it's, it's the lower potential, so it's going to lose electrons, and you don't have M N. So that means that reaction is not possible. I mean, basically, the reaction would have been possible if M N two plus was going in the forward direction. So is this point clear? Yes, sir. Okay, so you'll you'll continue to repeat the whole process. Eventually, you'll reach a point where the reaction is not it's not going to take place. Okay, because uh, none of the equations would be making sense anymore. So adding all of them up, it's going to be the products should be on the right side, and uh, the products are what are your products in the top one? The product is uh, CFE. It's three Fe three plus, and there's two Fe three plus over here. Okay, you got to add both of these, so it's going to be five Fe three plus and uh, uh, MnO two plus. It's uh, Mn two plus at the bottom, plus it's a uh, four H two O. Now one thing gets cancelled out, and that is uh, MnO two. So that gets cancelled out if you sum up all the equation. And uh, once you cancel that out, so once you cancel that out, uh, you just move it. So that is the reaction. Now this is a very popular equation, especially for moles. I mean, it's you get a lot of questions on this, so they might link it up with uh, with electrochemistry. So this is a very popular equation. It's the it's a redox iteration of uh, iron two plus uh, using KMnO four. Now the shorter or the quicker way to do this is uh, because this equation is very popular, so that's why it's better to learn this equation. So the short shortcut is you're going to get the same reaction. Instead of doing it in two steps, the shortcut is don't use the 1.67 volt equa equation. If you had used the one point, even though it's that's the highest potential, but if you had used the 1.52 volt equation, you would have gotten to your answer in the first attempt. So that's a shortcut. I mean, although this reaction is happening in two steps, but the shortcut is don't use the 1.67 volts equation, even though it's the highest potential. Instead, use the 1.52 volt equation. Then you'll directly reach, uh, I mean, instead of going to MnO2 and the next step, turning that MnO2 into Mn2 plus, you could have gone directly to Mn2 plus. So that's a, that's a shortcut. Uh, and the reason you should use that shortcut is because this equation comes very frequently. So don't use a 1.67 volt equation. I mean, simply ignore this equation. And so instead of doing your working, uh, you're working out the answer twice, you would be able to reach your answer in one step because at the end of the day, you're basically looking for the equation. So, so it's, it, it would be a lot better if you could just simply ignore one of the equations. 
Is the shortcut clear? Yes, sir. Sir, but I want to ask something. Sir, you have the first equation. How uh, did you assume x is assumed in iron 2 plus? No, I assume it's given. Let's say it's given in excess. ठीक है okay, या अगर अज्यूम करने की बात है ना व्हाट यू कुड थिंक ऑफ इट एज के यू आर टाइटेटिंग इट राइट तो MnO4 इज बीइंग एडेड फ्रॉम द टॉप एंड दैट MnO4 टर्न्स इनटू MnO2 ठीक है नाउ लेट्स से द फर्स्ट मॉलिक्यूल ऑफ MnO4 इज एडेड राइट मतलब आई मीन व्हाट यू कुड थिंक ऑफ इट इज दिस वे आई मीन दिस इज टाइटेशन यू नो पता है कि रीडॉक्स टाइटेशन में यू गेट अ लॉट ऑफ क्वेश्चंस लाइक दिस राइट so yes sir okay so let's say you're adding i mean usually it's came of four that's in the burette tk and there's a there's a flask at the bottom that contains uh as a that contains fe2 plus or in our case feso4 i said now not all the came of 4 is added in one go you add just one tiny i mean you add it drop by drop by side right, from the burette so let's say one drop of uh, kmo4 goes into the flask that for this one drop the fe2 plus is in excess right we need to clear that okay, initially it is fe2 plus is in excess because you just added one drop although it, i mean you're consciously adding but let's focus on the initial first drop of kmo4 that's added so the fe2 plus is going to be in excess for that particular kmo4 You clear the idea? Yes, sir. So what will happen is that that one tiny drop of MnO4. Let's assume that it contains just one molecule. That MnO4 is going to first get converted to MnO2, and it's surrounded by Fe2+. The whole flask is made up of Fe2+. Then that MnO2 would then further react again with Fe2+ and get converted to Mn2+. Uh, so. For those drops initially, the Fe2 plus is in excess. But the end is that once you have added all the KMnO4, that you run out of Fe2 plus. So is the point clear? Yes, sir, clear. I said so. So for this, because it's a popular equation, uh, one thing you could do is you can either just memorize this equation uh, instead of wasting time. Like if it if it isn't a redox question, but they are asking you to make this equation. And they very frequently do ask you to make this equation. Uh, and for KMnO4, you would have to do multiple steps because there are too many Mn oxidation states. So it's a lot better to actually just either memorize this or use this shortcut. Just don't use the 1.67 volt equation. Then you'll arrive at this equation in just one step. That's so, consists 1.67. Consist equation. Yeah, well, you know, okay. MnO4 minus one first step, so, no? we did. Uh, M no four minus one no, turning. No. I mean, this was the highest potential, right? So I'm saying, if you hadn't used this equation, instead you had used the one point five two volt equation. I mean, if you had ignored mm. this equation, and instead of you you using one point five two, you would have gone directly to M in two plus. I mean, it's uh, and that would just require one step. Okay, is the point clear? Yes, yeah, sir. Sure. ठीक है, although technically it's going to turn into MnO2 first, and then in the next step the MnO2 would turn into Mn2 plus. I mean, technically it's a two-step reaction, but let's assume that uh, we just wanted the equation, and the question was focusing on other things, or we just looking for the equation basically. So we wanted to save time. Now, uh, this another thing that I'm going to do, and that is related to. Uh, Remember, higher potential gains electrons, lower potential loses electrons. So, so there's a thing, and this is not related to this topic, but it involves the same concept. So, which is why it's important to do this over here. There's an example for homogeneous catalyst, which we're going to cover, and you have to memorize this specific example. Because it appears they're very specific, and even in the exam questions, they give you exactly this example. I mean, it's specifically mentioned in the syllabus. So, so there's an example for homogeneous catalyst. Uh, firstly, what what's a homogeneous catalyst? It's uh, 
it's when the catalysts and the reactants have the same phase or state. So your catalyst and your reactant have the same state. Now, uh, if they have the same state, one example is, uh, I'll just focus on the ions. One specific example they talk about is uh, uh, Fe2 plus or Fe3 plus catalyst. For this specific reaction, for I minus one plus S2A2 minus reaction. So you, you got to memorize this specific example. So first thing, uh, how does the catalyst work and uh, how does it relate to electrochemistry? So Starting with the first thing, we're going to try and figure out what's the reaction between I minus one and S2O8. So we're what's the reaction? So we'll just open the data booklet and we'll just copy equations. Uh, there would be one for iodine, probably just one. Let me not this. So where's uh, I mean, it's right in front of us. So here's an equation for iodine. So, and then there's another equation for S2 void, which is, it is probably just one equation, which is 2.01 volts, just a second. So pretty standard stuff, just do reactions, higher gains electrons, lower, loses electrons. So there's no complication here. Yeah. So just do equations, that's it. Uh, which one is the higher one? It's the bottom one that gains electrons. So this is your reduction E naught or high E naught. And this one is your low E naught. That's the one that's going to lose electrons. So, and you do have both of your reactants. You've got I minus one and you've got S2O8, two minus. So there's no, no issues there. The electrons are already balanced. So I'm, I'm just going to write down the equations. So the first reactant, reaction has 2i minus 1 as the reactant and in the second one it's uh, s2o8 2, 2 minus that's the that's the reactant and the product that you're going to have in the first one it's i2 that's getting formed and in the second one it is 2so4 with a charge of minus 2 so that is a reaction and uh, there's no problem there. There's, this is the reaction. And uh, it's got a very high E0 cell. The E0 cell is reduction potential minus uh, oxidation put potential. So, so the E0 cell is coming out to be uh, 2.01 minus 0.54 volts and that comes out to be 1.47 volts so it's a it's a pretty it's a very feasible reaction you got a very high e naught cell so it's very feasible uh the only problem is that that this reaction it should be very spontaneous the electrons should flow very quickly like this is a very high potential it really likes to gain electrons that's a low potential it really likes to lose electrons there's a huge potential difference between the two electrodes now the only problem is that uh, 
it's not going to happen. I mean, this reaction in reality does not happen. So no, no reaction. It's got a very high activation energy. So Ea is your activation energy. And uh, even though, theoretically, it's a very feasible reaction. So on paper, judging by its... Then no, no reaction, Q. Okay, but first thing, guess why is there no DR? I mean, theoretically, even though theoretically it is very feasible. I just, just use common sense or why is there no reaction in reality? Like on paper, it's a very feasible reaction. So what is stopping this reaction from happening? Like what's wrong with these two things? Any idea? Why can't they react with each other? I said both are negative ions. Okay, so both of them are negatively charged ions. So they're, nev they're never going to beat each other. I mean, negative ions repel negative ions. So in reality, you can't put two negative ions together. It's, they're going to repel each other. They're not even going to collide. It's, it's going to be very hard for them to, for them to collide because, because for the reaction to happen, you need collisions. And that is something that would be very hard for them to do. Like you would have to make them very energetic so that they somehow are able to interact with each other, which is not going to happen because both of them are, are negatively charged. So it's got very high activation energy. And the reason for that is both ions are negatively charged. And, uh, and repel each other. TK, is this clear? Did you, is this clear, Zoha? Yes, sir, clear. Uh, so, hence high activation energy. And they're going to ask you specifically for this. So now what we're going to do is we're going to bring in the catalyst. So we've realized that these two things are not going to react with each other. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy the same equations. And uh, the only thing is now I kind of know that they're not going to react with each other. So these two equations. So it's, it's very hard for them to re react with each other. And I'm going to bring in the Fe2 plus Fe3 plus equation, which I think we had somewhere. I mean, this one. So I'm going to copy this equation. This is going to be our catalyst. So these two are not going to react with each other. Remember, the iodine is not going to react with the, uh, the S2O8 equation because they would be repelling each other. So we bring in our catalyst, which is which is, uh, so these are your, these are our catalyst. So it could be iron two ions or iron three ions. Both of them work perfectly fine. Now, since these two are not reacting with each other, uh, this is not happening. We've realized the iron ions then start to react with both of them. So we bring in, we add the iron ions. The iron ions first go and they react with the iodine equation. In that case, iron is the higher potential, so it gains electrons, and iodine is the lower potential, so it, it loses electrons, right? And I'm going to make the first reaction. Reaction number one that's going to happen is that the iron ions, as soon as they are added, they start reacting with iodine. So, so this is the reaction that happens. It's 2i minus 1. That's the reactant. Uh, this needs to be multiplied by two so that the electrons are balanced. So you got two I minus one and two Fe three plus. And the 
products are uh, 2Fe2+. Plus. And in the top one, the product is I2. So that's reaction number one that will happen. And then the same iron ions are also going to react with, uh, I'm going to show that in green. They're also going to go and react with the with this S208 equation. In that case, the iron ion equation is the lower potential, so it loses electrons. And the S2O8 equation is the higher potential, it gains electrons. So this is what's happening that iron ions, they, when you add them, they react separately with iodine as well as S2O8. So I'm going to write down the equation for S2O8 now. So focus on the green one. The reactant now is S2O8 2 minus. I mean this one. And in that one, the reactor is 2Fe2+. Plus. And the product in the first one is uh, the S2O8 equation is 2SO4 minus 2. And uh, you do put well, the top one, the product is 2Fe3+. Plus. And that's my second reaction. Just a second. So this is what has happened. Okay, previously we figured out that these two equations are not going to react with each other. We figured out uh, the reasons why they're not going to react with each other. So, so I added this equation in the middle, uh, which is the iron ion. So I, I added iron ions, iron two plus or iron three plus ions. And as soon as I added them, they started reacting with iodine. They also started reacting with S2 8 and that resulted in two separate reactions. That's reaction number one, and that's reaction number two. If you look at these two reactions collectively and you compare it with the initial equation that we came up with, you would realize that it is the exact same reaction, just a second. So the reaction that was not happening initially has now taken place in two steps. So if you look at it carefully, you would notice that uh, the I minus one in the first reaction has been converted to I2. So I minus one got converted to I2. And S2, A2 minus got converted to SO4, two minus. So that is also done. And what is happening to your iron ions, Fe3 plus first got converted to Fe2 plus, and the same Fe2 plus got converted back to Fe3 plus. So that means the Fe3 plus ions remain unchanged during the reaction. So they're acting as a catalyst. They've provided an alternate pathway for the reaction to happen, and they've remained unchanged. So it's, it's basically the same reaction, but now divided into two steps. There's step one, and there's step two. TK, is this, is this clear? Maria, is this clear? Alicia, Deprar, Zoya, is this clear? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, so the reaction has basically happened in two steps. And you're getting the same products, exactly same products. Uh, iron ions remain unchanged. So Fe2 plus or Fe3 plus, they would remain, they remain unchanged. And can anyone explain to me why are these two steps a lot faster now compared to step this one? I mean, the same reason which was preventing the reaction to happen directly because both of them were negatively charged ions is the same reason why these two steps are happening in a, at a much faster speed because now both ions are oppositely charged. In the first one as well, both ions are oppositely charged. So, so they would attract each other. They would collide with each other 
more effectively and they're not going to repel each other. So both ions are now oppositely charged and they attract each other. Okay, is this clear? Yes, sir. So remember this specific example, you've got to memorize this example. I mean, you have the, uh, the redox equations in front of you. You can make this up as well. But this one specific example is going to come in your exams just like this. They're going to ask you everything about this. So, so both ions are oppositely charged and uh, in the attract. So hence, your activation, activation energy is going to be a lot lower. No repulsion, nothing. Isa, I'll try and uh, send the video lecture, Tika. Oh, because I'll, I have, I have uh, I'll check, I, I have uh, all the lectures. Just keep reminding me, TK, if I don't do this. So let's continue tomorrow then, TK. And I'll try I try and send the notes as well. I'll uh Nadine, I'll share the because they're not complete yet. So I'm not going to make the PDF, but what you can do is you can just uh click on this link and and the board will open up. So let's continue tomorrow. Okay, love is I love you.